thanks, uh, Tony. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Uh, very excited about this class. We literally just got our one more uh, signature just in with Javant Brown, linebacker from St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, another highly recruited guy, inside backer that we felt, uh, you know, that we really hit another area of need. So uh, very happy to. Uh, yeah, I don't think you guys have Javant's information in front of you, but he just signed the papers and got it in. So. I think that makes 22 uh, for us at this point uh, with this class, uh, 22 signatures we have at this point. Do anticipate continuing to work uh, throughout the day to try to get a couple more, maybe the next couple days. We may have a couple uh, more announcements with some good news and also we'll continue to, to recruit uh, after the new year with the January recruiting period. But uh, 22 in the boat right now, um, that includes uh, six transfers, so 16 high school uh, players nine on offense, seven on defense, six in-state players, uh, if you count the two transfers uh, that are coming back. So happy about that and uh, really pleased with the way we finished. Obviously, uh, with being able to announce some of it, last night you see the additions of some of the transfers that added to this really strong class. If you look at us uh, through this year, uh, some people may have you know, been a little concerned. I, I really wasn't. I mean, we were working hard to try to finish as strong as we could. But really, if you look at, and we don't always look at that, but you all do. If you look at average star ranking, I mean, we're, we're really pretty high, you know, pretty strong, uh, top 20 nationally. We just were, were needing to address specific areas in the transfer portal and wanted to make sure we had room for some of that. Uh, but uh, it always starts with the high school guys and very pleased uh, with the 16 players that we um, signed. Um, really feel like we hit all areas of need. We hit some big strong guys, some physical guys on the offensive line. Three more great playmakers at the wide receiver position. Uh, another talented tight end, um, you know, and uh, really hit some areas of needs out of high school uh, in the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, uh, much the same. You know, just feel very um, good with the players that we signed. Uh, really, you know, we went really all over the place where we signed from Alabama, uh, Ray Davis, if you look at Ray's from California, but Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Illinois, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Tennessee uh, with another great wide out out of Tennessee. So uh, I feel like our staff did a good job finishing extremely uh, strong. Uh, it's a very hectic time, as you all can imagine. Uh, we've touched on it briefly with um, meeting with your players, getting ready for bowl games, uh, re-recruiting or retaining the, the, the team that you have, uh, getting the additions that we got this morning, um, and then uh, continuing to recruit and had practice this morning. And, and uh, the players uh, have a little bit of a well-deserved break coming up uh, starting this afternoon. So um, I'll be glad to answer any questions about specific players. Um, but again, uh, I know our Kentucky football team got better today with the addition of uh, the nucleus of our guys from high school and, um, you know, obviously the, 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 the transfer and, you know, really headlined uh, by Devin uh, Leary, you know, a guy that um, was highly sought after anybody that was in the quarterback market. And I mean anybody and everybody that was in the quarterback market uh, was after him. So uh, we really feel like uh, we hit a, a home run with him and, uh, you know, it's, it, again, I've, I've told you I feel confident with the quarterbacks that we have on campus. But this gives you a one-year, uh, you know, transfer free agent, if you will, to come in uh, for a year and really bridge that gap and let our guys continue to grow the quarterbacks that we have on campus. I'm excited to watch them play in this game. Um, they really worked hard and are doing some good things, and I'm excited to watch them. But with Devin, it brings in a proven – uh, guy with a lot of snaps under his belt with the playmakers that we have in place. Um, you know, that's a, a really big get for us. Um, obviously, hit some areas of need with offensive line in the transfer portal. That was really important for us. Uh, the running back gives us another, you know, guy that kind of fits our mold of, of running backs in Ray. And, um, you know, so that was really good. And then, of course, defensive backs, we needed, we needed some corners and really fit, feel like we hit some home runs there as well. 
So I'll be glad to open it up for questions at this point. Both uh, Leary and Cox's seasons ended with injuries. Do you anticipate they'll be able to participate in spring practice? I do. I do. Um, to what extent or how you know, much they'll go, um, you know, we'll see. But, yes, they will be cleared. It's mentioned the other day that other schools tried to use that you don't have a coordinator right now against you in the process. So what was the pitch to them? And kind of oh. We'll, we'll keep that. That's very creative, John. <laughs> you know, you you know better than that. <laughs> I think you know me a little better than that. But it was good try. You know, I think you know. I think you know where what uh, direction I want to be and the clarity that I want to have at that at, at the right moment. You know what I mean? We'll have that. And, uh, I think I believe the the transfers know very clearly what direction. Uh, I want to go, and we're going to go with this offense. So, Mark, now that you've gotten to this point, has juggling the transfer portal along with the recruiting trail been as hectic as you expected? Has anything been easier for you? Um, you know, it's extremely challenging to say the least. You know, and uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't have all the answers. But this right here, you know, is not sustainable. You know, it's just it's just clearly not. And I think any and all, you know, head coaches will say that in some form or fashion. And uh, so we'll see where it goes. I mean, hopefully we'll 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 all get together and find some common ground and some some ways to to help everybody that's involved. You had a lot of success with Will coming from the portal. A lot of people are going to want to compare Devin and Will. Just how do they compare? How are they different? What's yeah, the, what's I, the game? Yeah, and you know as well, I'm going to say, it's really not fair to compare people. I mean, you have two talented players, two very good players, um, different situations the way they were, you know, came in. You know, with Will coming in as primarily used as a running quarterback and not really seen him throw that much, you know. And so uh, Will came in and really proved himself that first year. With Devin, you know, he has more, quite a few more snaps on tape. So uh, much different in that aspect. You know, Devin has clearly uh, more experience and more snaps under his belt. So they're already different in that area. You know, they're both very good players, very talented in their own right. And, uh, you know, that's really all, that's all I can say at this point. For the high school guys, you, you were ever bringing some more receivers uh, to help him. The freshman makes an impact this year. Do, do you anticipate any of these guys you're bringing in to make it? I do, and um, you know, I, I feel like you know the guys that we have. Some of the guys that we had that red shirt this year, I'm gonna we're gonna play them in this game, you know. And so, uh, Jordan Anthony and uh, Brandon White, you know, it'd be good to see those guys play a little bit. Obviously, Dekel's been coming on, you know, but we have some guys that are ready, you know, to make the next step. But we definitely needed some depth, and these are the type of high school receivers that definitely could come in and play. We talked with uh, your new running back coach the other day, and he said. There was conversations about maybe him coming on a little later than he did. How important was it when recruiting these transfers and some of these high school kids, even though he came in late, to just bring him in when you did? I wanted to bring him in when I did. But, you know, and, and another reason, I wanted to lock him down. I wanted to get him. You know, and so uh, I wanted to make sure um, I got that done and, and got him on board. And he's, you know, been been anxious and ready to go and, and really stepped in. And you could see how charismatic he is and how good of a recruiter he is right away just from the visits I've been with him. And and uh, so he's, he's done a really good job. Mark, you referred to the border-to-border -border aspect of this, of this group of players. Is that... A, maybe not a statement, but does that speak to, I guess, the, the, the new status of UK football, or is it just a coincidence? It, it just it is what it is. I think you know. We've talked about it from where we're located. We, we I try to base, you know, within a six-hour radius of here, but you know, our foot would print expands a little bit you know we've we've gotten some exposure the past three four five years and, and uh, are able to to reach more places and we're just in one of those uh, geographic locations that you have to go to you, you have to go uh, you know a lot of different areas Mark Ray Davis how I guess important was it to get not only back with experience maybe a little bit of bigger back power back yeah I guess need that moving forward it definitely important. I mean, you just look at Ray and, you know, he, he kind of fits that mold of what we've been, you know, and how, how you need to have that tough, strong, physical guy. But we also wanted uh, some dynamic playmakers as well, you know. And so uh, we're still working at that position and hopefully signed a, sign a, uh, in a very explosive 
dynamic high school guy as well, so we're, we'll work that for, for, for more time. Uh, but it was very important with Ray. I think he's another guy that obviously did very well against us. He did it, He's proven uh, player in the SEC. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's been a great addition. And uh, he's just a – he's got a very charismatic personality, very strong uh, young man on and off the field. And so we're, we're grateful to have him. Mark, what did you see from the Cox when you guys played him? Yeah. Yeah, it was big, just a big athletic guy. I mean, you know, again, arguably one of the, you know, very talented tackle in there, and we know we needed a, a tackle. And so, uh, you know, I think that was a real important get for us. And, uh, you know, you just saw length, you saw athleticism, and uh, another great addition. What did Childress' ability to play this year when they probably weren't necessarily thought of in the spring? You've done a good job of getting those guys ready. What do you like about Stewart and England coming in to play this class? Yeah, I think they're both just good football players, versatile guys. I like guys that are versatile, intelligent, you know, can, um, you know, they have length, uh, they have speed. Um, so I, I just think they both bring a lot of versatility. You, you hadn't been to South Florida since. Uh, Eddie first got there, and Eddie go get Brown. I guess, yeah. what's the thinking about? Yeah, I just felt like we 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 needed to get back in there. We had success, as you know, uh, early on in that. And then, you know, without trying to say anything negative about, you know, but we maybe uh, a few guys didn't work out. And so we, we kind of got away from it for a minute. Uh, with Mike coming on board, you know, he you know he got a little stretched out. He went all the way from, you know, the west side trying to cover the whole state, and that's pretty hard to do. You get spread out, but he got in front of a lot of people. And getting a guy out of St. Thomas, out of South Florida, is very important, especially a very talented player in an area, you know, a guy that we needed. Uh, so I think it was really good uh, for us to get back in there. You know the athletes that you, you can get out of Florida. The thing about Florida players is, is there's so many of them that uh, the, a lot of them are going to travel. Mark, um, Kamari Anderson? What are your impressions of him, and how gratifying is it you lost an assistant that was very tied to the city of Detroit, and yet you guys are still able to, you know, every year, so they get a good player out of Detroit? Yeah, I think it's important to keep that pipeline going. You know, very happy with Kamari. I think he's a very athletic guy and, you know, just a big-time tight end, and so, you know, we're excited to get him. Mark, back to the secondary. Jason Dunn was one of those defensive back additions, I guess, length like you're talking about is a plan to maybe play him at corner or do you want to start him at safety what yeah, we're, plan? the plan is to play him at corner right now and uh that's you know i think that's where we need you know we have an area of need and uh and uh, he's a guy with very good top end speed and some length and so uh, again he's a guy that's versatile though we're talking about the secondary the way the game is played now is just a situation where you can't have enough of those guys it you is have to have to have it is position. it is and you look at certain teams and you look at you know some teams in our league, and, and, you know, you have to be able to match up with some of that speed and uh, guys that are spreading you out and, uh, you know, putting stress on you to win one-on-one. -on -one. So, yes, I think it's very important to continue to build in the second half. Mark, you talked about addressing the needs in the transfer portal along with these high school guys. Do you feel like you guys have addressed those needs or other guys come in and different things like that? You may have to go for a few more guys. You kind of like where you're staying at? Uh, I think we did. I think we did a pretty solid job of what we we're, we were aiming for in the portal. So I feel pretty good about that. It's not to say that uh, you want to take more, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mark, what are your expectations for Tanner Wallace? I think, uh, again, a guy with experience, you know, that's been in a great program that's uh, from in-state and it's a big, strong guy. And he's excited to come back home and play. And so we, we welcome him back and excited about, you know, bringing him in. I think, again, he fits kind of what we've been, you know, and just that physical tough guy. And, um, you know, again, he, he's been coached well and, you know, and, and been in that program. And so uh, we're excited. you envision him as a guard? We do. Yep. Mark, Mark Ward has been kind of committed to you all for a long time. Mm -hmm. to kind of get lost in the shuffle here coming up. What about him? Yeah. What made him such a highly ranked Yeah, process. it's a good point because you kind of, you know, Shamar's been so solid with us. You know, people, there's no drama. And so you, you kind of sometimes gets lost in the media drama. But uh, Shamar's a great young man, great family, extremely solid, been so solid with us and can play at so many different places. Uh, again, big, strong, serious, you know, player, um, you know, anticipate he's the type of young man that could come in and have an impact early. Mark, you had... 
the three freshmen this year getting <clears throat> recognition receivers and Deion last year, Eli. How does that help you on the recruiting trail when you have kids who are doing so well? I know everybody can't do that, but yeah. when they're able to make an impact so early. Yeah, and, it, and you never know how that's going to go. You you covered it long enough to know that we used to have to play freshmen just because we just didn't have guys that could, that could play. Now you have guys that are coming in that are just – too good to keep off the field and again that's it's not you know that's uh, the truth as you're recruiting somebody it proves to them that if you're the best player that you're going to play and uh, you know we have to do that and the competition's open and you know if guys are confident enough in themselves and know that they can come in and compete it sh it shows and proves to them if, if they are the best player they're going to be on the field and they're going to play. Mark, obviously you have a bunch of turnover at linebacker this offseason. How's Grant got kind of Yeah, Grant's another guy that you kind of take for granted because, again, unbelievable family, so solid, been so solid to us that you just so appreciate, you know, these guys. And they've all been that way. There's been very little drama in this class, and I appreciate all of them for that. They've been very loyal to us and very, very strong. But Grant is such a good football player, uh, great length, great upside. Again, he's a guy that, that you, you definitely see at outside backer, but but – certainly could probably play inside as well. And we've had some of those guys, the Jamin Davis, that had that kind of length, that played some outside, played inside, uh, but very talented player and just a strong young man and great addition. There were some coaches that were coming in and trying to get into Sierra Addison uh, late in the process, but he's not ranked very high, and a lot of them see him as a receiver. What, what do you all see? His yeah, game? we see – I'm very excited about him. Just great length, very strong, you know, competitor, uh, versatile. You know, I love guys that can play receiver. I mean, if you're going to coach corners, you'd want them to be able to catch and run and judge the ball and all those things too. So uh, Nasir is, is, again, versatile but good length and really good top end. And I like how competitive he is. Uh, Wood from just down the road in, in Richmond, uh, really intriguing guy with his, his frame and mm -hmm. kind of what he projects at long term. Yeah, just great length, great, you know, talent and, uh, you know, very good player. And so – you know, just a guy that you want to come in and develop, you know. What did Ty Bryant get out of that extra year of high school, pre-classifying? I think just confidence, you know, size. He just looks really good out there, really, really comfortable. Just watch him in the state championship game and watch the way he moves around and just, you know, he's playing in a state championship game here and it just, you know, he just, I think the confidence, he, he belongs and you know, I think he'll come right in here and it won't be a big transition for him. Now, Tommy Zeesman is not as tall as some of the defensive linemen. You what do you all like about him? And after you stay changing, you're going to be your goal line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. Tommy, uh, what we like about him, the, the, the thing that jumps off the tape at you is, is how active he is and how, how, how hard he plays. And he just has that knack for making plays. Um, so I think you could overcome that. You know, I think we have a good balance. I think it's very clear that we want some length, but that doesn't mean that's the end all be all. You know, when you got a player like him that could make plays and be as active as he is, that there's a good mixture there. Mark, you said, as you said earlier, you know, players now know more of what you're about than you did early on. Maybe you're open to more players listening to you. But does that change what you look for in a player? Is it any different now than it was when you first got here? Well, I think cl clearly if you think it, you know, the, the talent threshold, you know, it always has to be what we want it to be to go into the SEC. And as we keep on competing and, you know, building the program, I think maybe that talent threshold we try to keep on elevating. And, and uh, I believe we've done that. And, you know, when, you know, you look at classes and, uh, you know, you put it together and, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, if you get some impact guys like we did a year ago, you know, it's not always the – the highly ranked guys, you know, but when you get some impact guys out of that, you know, that's how you, you build a program, just stacking it. You know, with this portal, it's just, it, it is a different world right now. You're going to lose some, you're going to gain some, but it helps you address specific needs. And again, I feel very confident that we hit on some, some areas of, of some proven players that we needed some help. Mark, when you were looking for a new running backs, a coach, you mentioned dynamic recruitment. It's one of the big things and part of that you have an area where Buller is expected to count? Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not prepared to, to to answer that right now. I want to contradict myself on that because I've quite honestly been overwhelmed. But uh, <laughs> but we'll we'll look at where. But Jay is a guy that could go a lot of a lot of different places. He really is. He's a seasoned vet that can uh, adapt and really recruit anywhere.
Well, it didn't seem like a whole lot of guys, a whole lot of schools came after Kobe Tino. Mm -hmm. How big was it to hold on to him? What do you see for his future? Yeah, I was very excited about Kobe and keeping him. You know, a lot of people, when you get down there into the Deep South and, you know, things happen and, you know, in, in, uh, a lot of people were, were coming after him. But he's, you know, really appreciate the loyalty that he has shown and sticking with us because it was an area of need. Um, and, again, it fits that mentality that we want. You get, continue to get back to being a, a very physical offensive line. And uh, he certainly fits that mold. You see any Stenberg in here? I, I, I hope so. <laughs> I do, yeah. I, I know they wear boots and they like to hunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Mark, yesterday Vince said he felt sorry for you because you were being pulled in so many different directions and had to make all those in home visits and yeah. everything. Uh, what's that process like for you? Um, it's not the holiday that you guys are having, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, you know, it is what it is, and uh, it, it's it's a it's a very it's a busy time, very hectic, uh, from the end of the year um, to right now to today. You know, so um, very busy time, and uh, looking forward to a day or two off. To be honest with you, I spend some time with my kids, and uh, but. Uh, Having the surgery really didn't help. You know, if you see me out of the sling, don't tell Doc Johnson, he'll be pissed. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, really, that didn't help. But it's all good. I mean, it's a busy time for everybody. You know, I think that needs to be readdressed. And I was all for early signing period, and I still like it in some ways. But I think with the portal and with bowl games and, you know, managing your roster and everything, just there's a lot of things we need to address. Yeah kind of get on the same page because it's kind of chaotic there for a while. The calendar the, the, All the coaches and, you know, whether it's power five or whatever, the calendar, just looking at how everything falls. Oh, no, I mean, or adjust it. You know, I don't know. Again, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm holding on to my own, you know, what? You know, well, <laughs> you know, I mentioned that because Rich Brooks was a huge proponent, but mm -hmm. that was pretty important. So. And that's what I'm saying. It just things are adjusted. Yeah. Things are changing. I was – in favor, I was voting for the early signing period, but I think now this month is so crazy. Uh, I, I don't know. I think we got to just get together and have some great leadership and some discussions about how to improve this process. Do you get the sense that other coaches feel the same way? I think a lot. You know, I, I can't speak for everybody. I know there's many coaches that I talk to. Yes, there is. Coach, you look like you're going to have around seven guys that uh, the high school guys coming in early mm -hmm. in early. We saw guys really benefiting that in the past. Just how much does it help these guys when they get to come in early and get yeah. the spring stuff? I think it, it, it very much does. However, um, well, a couple things. I, I think, you know, over time, I'm in favor of that now, you know what I mean? Because I think these kids are very mature. We have systems in place. We keep an eye on them. They get ahead in school. It's a, for us, the transition, it's a much um, easier transition in the spring than it is in the, in the fall. It's extremely difficult in the fall. Even if they come in the spring, that doesn't mean the fall is going to be easy for them. The first fall they go through is very difficult. It's challenging um, no matter where you're at. Um, but... As far as playing time, I think we've proven that even if they come in in the summer, if they're good enough and can have the impact, they'll work their way on the field. So I, I think it helps. Um, it benefits them in a lot of ways. It certainly helps us in our depth and getting them ready. A guy like Dane, you know, in the impact that he had. But then you look at Barry on the other side, and he didn't come in. You know what I mean? So both of them had a great impact. One came in the spring and one came in the summer. Obviously, to me, obviously Jeff Brown came in late to Louisville. He's a big guy with Louisville history and so forth. Does it change that dynamic in recruiting, you think, at all? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, Jeff, uh, as I said to one brief conference or call I had or whatever, they asked about my, you know, and, and I just said it's kind of tough because I like Jeff. You know, and and not that I didn't like Coach Satterfield. I just really didn't know him very well. And uh, but uh, But, you know, Coach Brom, he'll do a really good job. I mean, obviously, great connections to the state, um, you know, strong impact in Louisville, and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a good coach and a good person. So they'll, they'll do very well, and we'll continue to battle, you know, with him and them and everybody else. We transfer quarterbacks really highly for you guys' interest in you. We did. 
Yeah, we did. We had a lot of guys interested. And, um, you know, a couple things. I think, number one, you know, with Devin having one year, you know, it, it kind of shows to the quarterbacks that you have on campus that we believe in you, you know, that you're going to be, you know, have a bright future. And, you know, with Devin, you know, I think it, it, it just, you know, you know with the quarterback position, sometimes you're splitting hairs, you know, whether it's your system or what's going on. You know, there's some very talented guys out there. We were fortunate that, that so many were interested in us. And, um, you know, for myself even, that gets to be a little bit of an awkward situation because I have such respect for those guys. And there's so many really good players, and they had really high interest in us. You had to juggle that. And uh, as I hope you all feel, I really try to be very honest and transparent, you know what I mean, with everybody. And that gets tough in that, in that situation, in that, in that free agency, if you will. What was that sense of, what was that feeling like when you did answer that big unknown question you found out there in this country? How did it feel? Did you say? Well, I mean, felt really good. I felt relieved. We felt confident, um, you know, that that he was high on us. But he still had another visit to make, and and he he was very strong. He was um, very much as I've mentioned some different guys before. I mentioned that with Josh Pascal, very much like what he said he did. You know, the process that he went through was he followed through to it to a T. You know, very thorough. Uh, you know, and, and I respect that. And I like the way he went through it. And he wanted to go on the visit, wanted to go home, wanted to sit down, look his parents in the eye to have a conversation, and then call me. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, so I always have great appreciation for people as detailed and as thorough and kind of, um, you know, very, very much process orientated that, as he is. And he's already on football. And, I mean, he's he's getting after it. So he's the type of guy you're looking for. Those that kind of characteristics you're describing there, you know, the new quarterback has to come over and kind of win the locker room. I think you all talked about that with Will. Do you see, like, Devin potentially coming over and doing that, becoming a leader from you, for you all pretty early? I think you could see that, and you could see it happening very easily. And, again, much like Will, authentic, not forced. He's just one of those guys. He's, he, he's, a, he's a dude. You know, he's one of, you know, one of the guys that you, he's very, very much you could see him being a great fit. Um, and it happened, and it happens, you know, easily. And I, I appreciate our football team because they've always been very accepting. And it's a new world now. I think we all understand with the portal that things, you know what I mean, rosters change much more dramatically than they have in the past. But we, I think our team has always been that way. You know, going all the way back to Courtney, you know, becoming a captain after a short amount of time in transferring in. And I think our team is very good that way. And I appreciate our team and, um, you know, again, the way they handle things and accept uh, guys coming in. They know there's going to be great competition, but they want our team better and uh, do a good job of, of that transition with, uh, with transfers. Once you get a, a recruit on campus when he's still thinking about it, who are the guys you like to put them with, the current players who are your better ambassadors? You know, there's a variety of guys, honestly. I'd hate to single out some of them, but we have a lot, and that's kind of what I was just complimenting our team. I think there's there's a lot of really good guys, and, and you know, I've talked about that a lot, but I just love and appreciate our team and, and the culture that we have, and we're not perfect, and there's some things I'd like to do better this year and, and you know, and, you know recommit to certain things if you will and you know there's things we all got to do uh but I, but i appreciate them and you know they're locked in they've been very good with this uh this gets to be a little bit of a difficult time they're ready for a break too you know they've been here a long time and they practice and everybody leaves all their friends leave and campus is empty and they're sitting here practicing and and uh they've been uh, very good and very committed and i appreciate that from them and They'll get a little break now that they deserve, and then we got to get back down there and, and you know get refocused and go compete to win a football game. You know, anytime you're playing a game, as you know, I think Kent, Kenneth mentioned, and all of our players. I mean, we're we're there to compete. We're there to win. You know, we have a game to play. Uh, we're, we're not taking that game just to go show up down there. You know, they don't need any more gifts. They don't need any more gear. They don't need any more shirts and t-shirts and sweats and shoes. You know, let's go play to win. You mentioned you were waiting on a potential running back mm -hmm. addition earlier. Do you have any other wiggle room, other positions? Did I say that? 
I might have. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I caught myself too. Yeah. There's another position out there. There's players out there that uh, can't make that same mistake twice. There's players out there. Where, <laughs> there's players that we're looking to still reel in. Huh? Thank you all. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you.